Hi, and welcome to our Double Pulse demo. Um, the focus of this uh, demonstration is our wideband cap customers, and basically anybody who's implementing um, SICK or GAN in their devices or designs. Um, customers are preferring um, SICK and GAN or the wideband gap technologies, basically due to their higher efficiencies, their faster switching, and their smaller size. Um, the key of what we're doing here is to provide a means for test, and the preferred means of test at this point is the double pulse test. Um, to do this, we are using a small demo board here, which is basically representative of a small converter. So we've got a gate driver with a couple MOSFETs and an inductor to emulate the converter circuit. We're providing power to our demo board using the 2281S Keithley power supply. And then for the high voltage supply that would be normally on your output of your converter design is going to be supplied by our Keithley model 2470 source measure unit, which can go up to 1100 volts. On the very end, we have the measurement star of our show, which is our Tektronix MS05 scope. So being able to take all of those great double pulse parameters that you're gonna be looking for at the very end. And then really one of the key pieces for this is what drives the gate of these MOSFETs as they're, um, they're activating, right? So before I jump into what does that is that we look at the purpose and the, the functionality of what the demo board is doing. So on the demo board, we have a gate driver, which is basically um, the insulator between your MOSFETs and some back driving circuitry. We have a couple sick transistors uh, that are being switched. Actually, one is being switched. We have a cascaded network of the two. The high side has its gate and its source shorted together. So it really doesn't have any activity itself aside from um, on the, the off condition of the double pulse, where we use the freewheeling diode to be able to measure those parameters and characteristics of when the, the devices switch back on, because you're gonna have some sort of transient activity. And we need to look at that for the power losses. The MOSFET that does get switched is the lower side MOSFET. And what we'll see is that during the, MOS, or the, the testing itself, is that the first pulse, which is a longer pulse, which is used to charge up the inductor, um, will be a little bit longer. So we'll have it set for time, 10 microseconds over here. Um, that is allowed, that allows us to do like the turn on, turn off parameters that we'll end up eventually uh, measuring. Uh, I mentioned the turn off, that helps kick in the freewheeling diode. And then we turn the gate of the MOSFET back on one more time so that we can uh, complete our uh, evaluation of the turn on and turn off um, measurements. Um, but we make sure that we keep that pulse very short in order to ensure that there's no device overheating. Now, um, you say, well, why do I have to have something like our AFG 31000? Well, it, it goes into time and effort. So you could have an engineer who wants to design their own pulsing um, type of uh, you know, circuit or mechanism. So it may be some FPGA device, uh, but that takes time to develop. It's going to take time to, to, to test, and maybe you don't get it right. So instead of iterating over, we're providing you an all-in-one solution. So now that we have all of our signals applied, we can see the output of our circuit over here on the scope. Um, the signals that we're monitoring are our VDS, which is the voltage drop um, across the drain in the source, which is actually what we're monitoring across the inductor itself, uh, which is charging and discharging. On the second line here, we have our current that's going through that inductor. And on the third line, we're directly monitoring our gate to source uh, voltage of the lower side MOSFET. Finally, down here on the final line, we just have a repeat of the AFG output, uh, showing you the double pulse as it's coming from directly from our source. One of the great things uh, about this, aside from seeing all these great instruments from Tektronix in concert and working together to give you the full solution, what really puts the icing on the cake here is the measurements that we get through the scope. So normally what you would do in a setup um, to do the difficult me method is you would use your cursors and you would dial into certain parts of, let's say, if you're looking at turn on time, you would set to 10% of your VGS, and then you would go over and look at, um, you know, maybe, you know, 90% of a balling edge of one of your other drain to source voltage and try and get that time on or that time off measurement. Um, instead of doing things by hand, the scope now has built-in software. So if I go to this measurement uh, menu right here, and I go to the wideband gap double pulse test tab, I can see I have all these options for measuring. One of my favorites here is the timing. So uh, we mentioned time delay on, time delay off, um, rise time, fall time. These are all important things for the customer. And we do them automatically. So I can set this up, I can add this to my 
my arrays and they show up all the way over here. You can't really see it on the right side of the scope, but we have this duplicated up here on this big monitor and everything shows up and gives you the everything automatically. So it really eases the, the process of making these measurements and getting you right to the answers that you were looking for.